Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. The goal is not to get through. So if you were a fly on the, on the wall in a Hearthstone residence, you would see residents getting invited down for breakfast. You would see residents having a morning meeting where the residents run, talking about the news, about the weather. Staff helps facilitate. If it's later stages of Alzheimer's, we would have music in motion. Everything is about engagement um, that, that we do. We have a program, Meet Me at the Movies. Six to seven minute clips. I Love Lucy, Casablanca, The Wizard of Oz, with conversation at the end. So what do we, what do we know? Engagement, 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 engagement. So as you said, Hearthstone is the center. We have our research department, we have our institute, we have um, organizations from around the country, around the world, come to us to learn how we do things non-pharmacological non approach. Um, and we're having a group from California come in next week. So thank you for the time. Uh, so, I guess I asked Eric to come over because Hearthstone, first of all, it's a great facility, but it's, and it's also close to here. But there are, are a number of these, there are a number of memory care units in assisted livings that are evolving now. And what's great about them um, is that you have a set of trained staff, like the people who are working with Eric, who are understanding the best way in which to be dealing with folks who have got serious dementia. Because I think that's one of the, that's one of the hardest things. I and mean, one of the things that I've come to appreciate versus when I watched this, when I went through, when I watched this happen with my mother. And I, I had always thought that there were a set of symptoms that are Alzheimer's symptoms and that they're all the same. And one, and one of them obviously is just lack of memory. And then in more serious cases, it's lack of memory about very simple stuff so that people really just can't follow basic instructions may not remember how to brush their teeth, may not remember how to take a shower. So the, the, the memory loss gets worse. And then there are these other things. There is the aggression, there is the apathy, there is the anger. And I had always assumed that those are built into, those are symptoms of Alzheimer's. I have come to believe those are secondary symptoms. Those are, those are things that result from the person reacting to those, the other symptoms, to the fact that they can't remember stuff or the fact that people are constantly asking them things and they can't answer the question, right? Well, the, the, so the question really for those folks is, how do you, you're not gonna get the memory back, but how do you get rid of those things? The anger, the anxiety, the depression, so that people who don't have memory are still having a meaningful day. They're still having a meaningful day. Because the goal of life is not to be able to do the New York Times crossword puzzle. The, New York, the goal is to be able to have a good day, to feel that, you, that you're doing something useful, that, that somebody cares about you, and that you're just living a meaningful life. So I also mentioned, though, I wanted to talk for a few minutes about, before we go to home care, I'm just going to go back for a second. I'm going to go all the way back to that money slide there. So one of the big questions, though, and that people constantly talk to me about is they say, well, you know, I can't afford it. I just can't afford assisted living, right? because it's not a nursing home, and therefore MassHealth is not gonna pay for it, right? And we just don't have the money. And because obviously, from both Frank and Mary's perspective, one of their goals is to not run out of money before they die, right? Neither of them can afford to run out of money before they die, so they wanna make sure they're okay. But remember what their situation is. Remember what their financial situation is. They've got a house that's worth about $300,000. They've got other assets that are worth about $500,000. So I'm just going to mention two things. One, if Frank need, or excuse me, if Mary needs assistance with at least two of the activities of daily living, and in this situation she does, if she's at the point where she's going to the memory care unit, either she, that she, she, need, she probably needs that kind of assistance with her day-to-day -day life, 
then first of all, if Frank was a veteran, or if she was, but more likely at that time Frank was the veteran, if Frank was a veteran and served during at least one day of war, of, of a, one day of a period of war, right, and, and don't assume that you know what those dates are. For example, for the purposes of this benefit, World War II did not end about at the time of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It ended a year and a half later, December 31st of 1946, right? So don't assume you know those dates. If Frank was a veteran, then Mary uh, can qualify for a significant aid in, a, the aid and attendance benefit if she needs assistance with two of the activities of daily living and if the payment to this memory care unit is a so-called bundle payment, if you're writing one big check to the company for everything that is being done for you. In Mary's case, that benefit would be about $1,000 a month. If Frank were the person that had dementia, that check would be about $2,000 a month. So assume that one of these memory care units is going to be costing you if they're both, if, say, that, say that they're both, and many times there is a couple, right? Mm -hmm. That they're both in the assisted living, right? Assume that your total cost all in for a month is going to be about $7,000, assume. Now Frank and Mary's income is only $3,000, which means they're short by $4,000 a month, right? And that's a lot of money. And they've got some savings, They've got $500,000 in savings, right? So they can afford $4,000 a month for a while, but not forever. Five thousand, they, can, they can afford four, that, that amount of money for about 10 years. About 10 years, right? Now that's, not, that's a lot, but that's not forever. But if Frank is getting $2,000 a month from the VA, or if Mary is getting $1,000 a month, now suddenly, that amount that they're gonna be having to spend, that, that extra amount that they're gonna to have to burn from their savings has gone down by that amount. It probably extends their, the, the, the amount of time they could stay in assisted living by another two years, actually, right? A second possibility, if Frank and Mary decide, if, if, Frank, if Mary needs assistance with two of the activities of daily living, and once again, if the, if the check that is being, and I should have told everybody, including myself, to, not, to shut off their phone before I start, and if, if, if they're paying a so-called bundled payment, one big payment that's going to the assisted living facility, then that payment is a medical deduction. The entire amount of that payment is a medical deduction, right? Now, why would, they care? Why would Frank and Mary care about that? Their income isn't that high. They're probably not paying any taxes. Well, remember I told you, though, they have three kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And now what I didn't tell you is that in my usual example, Peter is doing okay. He lives in New York City. He's a lawyer. He's making a lot of money. Uh, Paul is living on the West Coast. He's a computer programmer. He's doing okay. In my typical example, Peter is, because he's in New York City, is in a high tax bracket. If Peter is in a 40% tax bracket and, he, and, and, and Frank and Mary have decided to give their money to Peter, right? Now, obviously, you have to trust Peter in this case, right? That he's not just going to take the money and say, geez, thanks, my and dad. But if Peter then pays that assisted living bill, He's pay, and, and, and that assisted living bill is $7,000 a month or $84,000 a year. That, is a met, that could very well be a medical deduction for him. And he's going to get 40% and 40 of that amount, or about $30,000, $35,000, is the amount that his taxes are going to go down. Now, if he takes that money and keeps that money in a pool for his parents, for Frank and Mary, what he has effectively done is he's taken that $500,000 that his parents have and expanded that pot by about 40%. Expanded it to about mm, almost $800,000. Which means effectively that Frank and Mary in that situation could stay in assisted living probably for 15 to 20 years. Now, if you assume that they're 80 years old, that probably works out okay. That probably works out okay for them. So I guess the moral of the story, it, as far as assisted living is concerned, is don't I'm just going to run back so that I'm caught up. Just going to take a second. Is don't assume, don't assume that assisted living is too expensive. Start, out, start off by going, go see Hearthstone or go see an assisted living facility. And once again, this is especially for many of the folks who are here, you are here because you've been engaged in some of this stuff and you know a lot of this stuff. But for the people who are watching this on cable at home, that's what's important, is that they understand this possibility. Go see these places. See if they would work. 
See if they would pl provide a safe place for your loved one who has Alzheimer's. A safe place and a safe in a place where they're going to feel like they're, me they're going to live a meaningful life. Then go to a professional and see if you can make the numbers work. Now, similarly with home care. With home care. Remember we talked about the fact that if, if Mary needs assistance, it needs nursing home care, she's also qualified for the frail elder waiver. She can get a lot of benefits. She can have mass health pay for a lot of hours while she's at home. The question is though, oh my God, is that a good idea? Is that a good idea? Having people come into my home, what's that going to be like? So I wanted Shelby to really talk about that, talk about how that could work, who these people are who are coming from agencies. And I guess my message, my, my bottom line message is, remember when you're hiring somebody to come in to help you to deal with your loved one who has Alzheimer's, that's not the same as they're going to just wash the dishes. You need someone who is going to understand how to deal with your loved one who has Alzheimer's. Shelby. So I represent an agency based in Westboro. We service many, many towns. Um, I'm really here to talk about home care, not specifically our agency. Some of the flavors of which I'll talk about are specific to our agency, but not unlike Eric's presentation, you know, the intention is really to talk about assisted living in a broad spectrum. I think not unlike researching assisted living, you have to research your home care options. It's your money. It's your loved one. You want to make sure they're receiving the best care. It's important to do your homework. So that's sort of my, my baseline. So that's our office. That's my business partner as well. Um, so let's talk about home care, okay? So um, home care may be appropriate for your loved one, uh, a friend, whomever, um, whether they're at their early stage of uh, dementia, uh, Alzheimer's, or whether they're late stage. Um, there are many considerations you have to con think about um, with home care. And I'd like to touch on one of the, the lead ones that Arthur uh, spoke to. My God, I'm going to bring a stranger into my home. So we will talk about that in depth. Um, uh, the reality of it is, is that when you're moving into an assisted living, strangers are caring for you. The difference is they're not in your home. So you do need to have a comfort level um, that strangers will be coming into your home, but that's part of how you vet or research agencies to understand who are these people and uh, what sort of background checks do they do, and we'll talk about that in a minute. 